Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna make a Regency bodice petticoat. I have one that I've already made. I made it on this channel years ago for my Europe trip, that, the trip of doom. <laughs> Everyone really liked the petticoat. They're like, oh, I wish that was, <laughs> like I wanna make that as a summer dress. And I'm like, okay, but you need to wear Regency underclothes to do that, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like your boobs get awfully high for this guy, but I have a picnic I'm going to this weekend with the GBACG, which is the Greater Bay Area Costumers Guild. If you are in the Bay Area or traveling through the Bay Area or just want to be nosy about things in the Bay Area, it's gbacg.org. It's the guild that I belong to on on some occasions. <laughs> Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. <laughs> anyway, we are doing a Regency event this weekend. Last video you guys may have seen, I updated the silhouette of my Regency dress, which is a Swiss dot dress. And I have a bodice petticoat that goes underneath it. It is a white petticoat though. And I saw while watching Emma 2000 <laughs> that you could put a colored petticoat underneath a white dress and it's very pretty. So I thought I would do that. I'm gonna see if I can speed run this and get it done ASAP because I would really like to wear it this weekend. It is currently Monday night, as we can see from the darkness outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get it done. My event is on Saturday. I would really like to not be panic sewing this at the last minute, so I'm gonna try to get that done now. The caveats are that on Thursday I'm out like basically all day because I have a little play date with a certain Dutch friend of mine <laughs> that has got, come into town and I also have plans for the evening so there's no sewing on Thursday so I only have a couple days here and it's already nine o'clock at night because I start these things in the middle of the night. <laughs> did I have all day to do this? Yes I did. Did I lay in bed and look at my phone? Yes. Yes I did. <laughs> Okay, so my goal for today is to look at this pattern, which is the Laughing Moon Mercantile Sewing Pattern 132 Ladies Bodice Petticoat Bum Roll and Pocket. I did use this one last time. I also have a review of this, which I will link down below for you. So if you want to see the white one getting made, I can show you the white one as well. Okay, here we are with the white bodice petticoat. It just looks basically like a Regency dress. I think I might cut this neckline a little lower and then the bottom of this one has some tucks. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't think so. There's a view B which doesn't have tucks here so I'm going to investigate this. Do you need to see my headphones? No. <laughs> um, so I'm going to check out view B here in the pattern and see what that looks like and maybe make that one instead of view A which is what I made last time. Okay view A and B's really only difference is this front of skirt panel the back is the same no matter what you do so and it's just shorter but basically identical and so I guess that's what I'm gonna do because I don't really need those tucks so I'm cool so I have this piece this piece this piece this piece and this piece and that's it so it's a total of five pieces to sew together she says implying that that should be super easy and no problem whatsoever <laughs> Okay, we're gonna see how it goes. The world has taught me that I should try this on, the one I have in the size 26, and just make sure it's good before I do something long and tedious and using up a bunch of fabric. So I'm going to use a silk taffeta, and I did, do need to figure out what color silk taffeta I'm going to use. I'm not quite positive yet, I'm gonna see what my options are. Okay, so here is my bonus petticoat. It does fit, so that's great. I'm feeling like the size is pretty good. I don't need it to be that much tighter. I might take the neckline just like an inch lower than it is now because someday I do want to take my regular dress neckline down and I just want to make sure that it will work. So I'm very pleased with these. <laughs> I like it with tennis shoes and hobbit shorts underneath. The back fits nicely. There's like lots of pleating going on back there so I feel like this is the one I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. Okay, I have no idea if this comes up on camera. <laughs> <clears throat> but this is like a peacocky blue color, which to me looks very dark on my screen. But you can see that there's a color underneath it, as opposed to like when there's white underneath it. So like if I double it up, you can see what it looks like with a white petticoat. So it does look different with a dark petticoat. And here's the purple. 
I almost think I like the purple more. Then I brought out this fabric because this will someday become an overdress and it's definitely more sheer, although I don't know on camera if you're seeing that. It is definitely more sheer in person than it is on camera. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the purple. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this purple because I asked my friend and she was like, well, the purple I can tell is purple and the blue just looks dark. And I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. So I think I'm just gonna go with this purple and I need four and three eighths yards or something like that. Sorry about the plane going overhead. Um, it's warm in my room and I have the window open. so I know what's going on. I have done this. I'm now gonna do this. Hopefully I have thread, so I gotta go find that. I might need to go get buttons tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm gonna just put on white buttons and call it good, which I might do. Or do I really wanna go get purple buttons? Okay, also I need like tape that goes inside the bias tape that like lets you gather in the bust area. Um, and I really only have white. Do I care that it's white? Uh, the problem is if I start caring it that it's white, it'll become a problem. I might like sharpie it a different color because it's like poly. I don't know if I can dye that. Anyway, I'll, I'll figure that out. Okay, I have her all cut out. There's another piece, so there's all five pieces. So now I'm going to set in some darts and then attach the straps and the back piece to this. And then this is like fairly like constructed. It has a bunch of handwork to do and then some buttonholes and stuff um, and a binding, which I'll have to make bias tape for. But this is pretty quick. That being said, there is some hand sewing involved, so maybe not as quick as I want it to be. <laughs> and then I just put the get together the skirt. I did burn test this stuff and it comes up as definitely having poly in it. So. I don't mind that at all. I am just fine to show it show up in whatever it is that I had the cloth to make things out of. So um, it, it's sleeveless. This part of it is sleeveless, so I'm not too worried about the like extreme sweat factor of it. I do think it might be a blend because it does have some smell of silk, which smells like burning hair. The flame color is totally weird, <laughs> um, and it doesn't like create a hard bead like poly does but it also doesn't feather off like silk silk does so i got nothing i, I got nothing <laughs> so i think it is a blend that's what happens when you don't get a clear result is it's usually a blend but i think there's definitely a bunch of poly in here so 
Anyway, I am, that's like neither here nor there. No one will come up to me and be like, your underdress is polyester. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not really worried about it. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and put those darts in and attach this stuff so this is like vaguely formed and then we'll see where we are. Okay, I'm here marking off the darts and I thought I would go ahead and just draw in a new bust line. I took it down about an inch at the center and then just sort of graded it out. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop that now while I'm here. Okay, let's talk about seam finishing because no pattern ever does. <laughs> you always have to choose your own. Okay, so this edge here, which is the neckline, and this edge here, which is like the arm side, will have bias binding on it. But there's a few little spots, namely here and what will soon be here, that don't really have um, like any kind of finish on them, and then the bottom edge. So what I've chosen to do in these spots is to... I don't know how how well you can see but like I tucked it under and then I pressed it and then I just stitched it so it's a cleaner edge so I've done that on both the arms and I just sewed the back on so I'm gonna have to go ahead and do that here as well and then I'm just gonna zigzag the bottom edge and then I'll zigzag the top edge of the skirt when that happens and that's usually plenty okay so the bodice has been assembled um, we're coming to the button part of this I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and possibly go to Joanne and just like look at their buttons to see what I want to do. I might just use white buttons I already have, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll get black buttons, who knows. In the meantime, I'm gonna do the fold over pressing for this part and like tack it down because that's the next step and then stop with the bodice until I figure out the button situation. Right, here's one million tiny stitches. Why I did these tiny stitches, I have no idea, but that is secure AF. Um, this is what it looks like on the other side. I mean, you totally can see it, but tiniest little, I gathered like one or two threads per stitch here. So, anyway, I feel like the bodice is together, this lump of <laughs> fabric. I'm always just showing you a pile of fabric. Okay, so the bodice is together, and I feel pretty good about that. I'm going to call it for tonight. It's 2 o'clock, so it's time to, to tuck her in. Alright, tomorrow we're going to try to tackle the buttonholes and buttons, and we're going to do the bias tape and finishing of the bodice with the bias tape. And we'll see what happens with the skirt. Okay, so I got some buttons, which look like this, vaguely when put near this purple and when they're on white for some reason they're totally different here <laughs> um this is how light works i've also marked where the buttonholes start so i'm going to do a test and then go ahead and make some buttonholes here and then sew those buttons on today's mission is to do buttons and buttonholes and cut the bias tape and finish the armholes and the neck hole there's a lot of word hole going on here. Anyway, I'm going to do, um, today's holes day. I'm going to do a lot of hole finishing. Um, so that is what all I expect of myself today. I, if I can get onto that and get onto some skirt stuff, I will be very happy to do that. Yay, we have buttonholes and buttons attached and I like them and they're fine. So we're going to move on to binding armholes and neck holes now. Okay, it, what is happening here? Uh, okay, it wants 5 8 inch bias tape to get made, and I am like, that is far too wide for me. So I have 5 8 inch on the other dresses, and I'm like, 
I don't love this. <laughs> so I'm going to do 3 8 And 3 8 times 4, which is makes bias tape, is 12 8 which is an inch and a half. So I'm going to cut some inch and a half wide bias tape at whatever the hole size is of these armholes. Okay, I ran into a little roadblock, but I'm going to show you how I solved that. Um, I need to have two pieces of string, tape, ribbon, whatever, sewn in right about here, and it comes out right about here, and there's one from each side, and then you can tie them, and you can scrunch up the neckle area. As you can see, my ribbon is white. My dress is purple. No one has purple ribbon. <laughs> like, I went to Joanne. There's no ribbon. I went to, I mean, there's ribbon, but it's like a mediocre selection. <laughs> um, I went to Michael's. Same, same. So, I created my own purple ribbon by buying a Coptic marker, which is an alcohol-based ink that is permanent. You can maneuver it with alcohol, though. <laughs> um, so, like, I got some on me, and I can get that off with alcohol. So, I just got this marker and started drawing on this, and it goes right through, and it dyes it pretty permanently. It makes it a little bit more stiff, but it still seems to knot up just fine. So, I'm going to sit here and uh, alcohol marker four feet of ribbon so that I have a purple. And Operation Purple Ribbon is complete. By the way, if you need to dye wigs, like this stuff works on like plastic and, and like whatever. You can write on kind of whatever with your Coptic markers. So if you need to dye a, a wig, you can do that. You can also do a nice fade on a wig by putting it, um, like taking out the, the center thing that's supplying the ink and dripping drips of the ink into a container of alcohol, like a spritz container, and then spritz it in on your wig. And like spritz it more on the side that you want the fade. That stuff's awesome. But I will say, rub, rubber gloves, man. Rubber gloves. Okay, this is done. I'm gonna go bind this bodice. Okay, so the armholes are bound, as you can see. It's just like binding a corset. And the top edge is also bound with a slit in the middle. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but... <laughs> These went from being purple to being, like, French blue, <laughs> which I'm like, okay, it's fine, it's better than them being white. I wonder what happened? The paper kind of looks like that too, but you can see this, like, tip. I mean, now that I'm looking at it against purple, no, it does look purple. And when you first put the stuff on, it is purple, so I don't know. I don't understand color theory well enough to understand what's going on there. Anyway, that's all done. Alright, so we're trucking along at a good pace, and I'm feeling good about my chances of getting this done for the event this weekend. Hello! We are back and ready to work on the skirt. Very excited about this because it means it's coming, it's coming along here. I'm very excited to walk in today and see an entire bodice done. That took me, I want to say like 11 hours, but I don't know why it took that long. <laughs> there was a bunch of hand sewing that I did, because um, like all the binding required hand sewing. Um, there was cutting the binding, there was, oh I guess I did run to Joann's to get those buttons. I think I read the instructions a bunch of times. Oh no, it's probably more like eight realistic hours. Anyway, I have um, moved on from that experience and now I'm gonna work on the bottom half. <laughs> okay, let's look at the board. Okay, today's goals are gonna be to sew the skirt, pleat slash gather the skirt, and attach the skirt to the bodice. Those are my three things for today that I would really like to get done. We'll see if we can make that happen. I haven't figured out if I wanna pleat the skirt or if I just wanna gather it. Gathering seems a lot easier. It really does. Pleating seems a lot cleaner. But if I pleat it, I gotta like mark it all up now and like deal with fiddly pleats. And if I gather it, I can just pull some strings. <laughs> but I'm a tedious mofo. <laughs> so we all know what I'm gonna do here, right? Like, you guys know. I need to lay out this hunk of fabric and mark it for pleating. So that means I gotta get everything off this table. Okay, be right back. Okay, so here's what I meant. <laughs> I have to mark all of these on both of these pieces. So backwards on the other one. Bun times. 
so excited can't wait okay i have both sides marked i am going to separate them now and go ahead and iron these out it wants you to make a full tube of fabric and then pleat that in i am not gonna do that <laughs> i am gonna pleat those in actually i might attach these two together after i iron them and then pleat this in um, and sew it down essentially so that it stays I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach these two. I'm going to do French seams on this. So cool. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, pleat it down as, as flat as possible before it gets into a tube because that just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, I did it last time and I made a note like in my, I did a pattern review of this pattern, which I don't do pattern reviews very often anymore, but, um, and it said like, I would have definitely done this while it was flat. So I'm going to try that and see if it works any better. This looks so bright on camera. It's so much darker in person. Um, okay. So we got a French seam going on inside here. This is the back two panels seamed and then it has all the pleating is now done and has been stitched up so it will just stay there so that makes me happy i have the front panel here i'm going to front seam these two back panels to the one front panel to make the aforementioned tube so i will be doing that for the next hour <laughs> and then i can attach it to the bodice and then we will have you know a dress which i will need to hem but we will be in a good spot okay i have done this one and I'm in the midst of doing that one okay so we have a fully formed skirt with nice French seams as you can see here we are looking at the inside currently and I am going to attach this bodice and stitch it down and then we will have a full dress that needs a hem and some maybe hooks and eyes I'm not sure if, yeah probably I should put some in here um, and a sash and then I think we're good <laughs> okay so we have it attached I feel like it's good I can put the dress over it but and show you what that looks like but um, that will stress my husband the heck out so I'm waiting until I get the hem done to do a full full situation report here but I feel like it fits really good it is what I need it to be, which is also poofy in the back. Witness my back poof. Like, it's supposed to, to add poof to the back. So, sweet. Okay, here she is on Brunhilda. Brunhilda's boobs are, like, a little bit lower than mine are, so... Cool. <laughs> like, you can see the bottom of it is, like, here. Whereas mine sit in this space. Um, so I think I'm going to do hem today, but I'm also going to put a hook and eye up here so it stays closed and then maybe one just in here as like a safety protocol, <laughs> but I am going to try to get the hem measured and the best way to do that, I think, is to put the dress, the, the white dress over this because then you just want this one to be just a little bit shorter than that. So it's easy to tell once they're on together. I, this this is never gonna lay flat. It's taffeta. Hi. Hi. Anyway, uh, so I think that's what's gonna happen today. Um, I did go out yesterday with Myrta from Holland, who was in town, and this bag right here is uh, my stash haul that I got while I was out, which was a bad, bad thing I did, but I, I feel good about it. Um, so I will show you that in just a second. It is so subtle and hard to see on this dress, but you can see that it is darker underneath um, and that is what it's supposed to do. Uh, the top part of my dress is lined. I completely forgot about that, so you can't see through it on the top, which kind of sucks, but here we are. Uh, on this dress, I think the one thing I want to do is put a hook and eye like right about here just to like lock that guy in. I'm not going to worry about hooks and eyes down here because I want to put in white ones and I don't think I have any, so... I can do a silver one in here and it'll be fine, but mm, this is a bit showy. So I'll probably order some and then just put a couple in down here so that this stays shut. Obviously this needs uh, an ironing. Also, something I'm going to have to do today. Cool beans. But I'm pretty happy with it. So, yay. And then I need a, st a sash for today. This one is cut so high. Like, that is the difference. It's 
mm, the top of it is here. So yeah, I could take off this whole thing, cut it down, and then uh, that's probably what I will do. Okay, I'm squatted here on the floor, and I haven't figured out how to tell you guys what's happening. Um, so what I th thought was going to happen was I would come here, and I would find the longest part of what's out, right? And then I would just roll that up like an inch and a half and see if it was hidden under this. And if so, great. I would just do it all at an inch and a half and chips, chips fall where they were. What actually ended up happening was, and, and why this is, is we have one pleated skirt over another pleated skirt. <laughs> and so what ends up happening, and I don't know if I can clearly give you this, so if it's a mess, I'm really sorry. Um, about at this point is where it stops being like pretty even with this hem. You can see how it like starts peeking out right about here. So I've got a pin in there. And then you come to the center point, which is here on this dress and this and here on this dress. And luckily there's a seam, so I pinned it. And that has about, mm, I would say, two and a half, three inches of play that I had to pin up. But if you come to just a little bit off from that, <laughs> you end up getting like five or six inches off from that. <laughs> so I was expecting the center back to be the longest part and to be like, oh, okay, I have to tuck that up more or cut, cut it off in some way more. But it's actually more like it crosses, it gets really low and then it comes back up to the center and then it crosses, it gets really low and then it comes back up. And that's just because of the way that the, the pleating is done. There's actually more pleats on the interior one than they're on the exterior. There's only like one, two, three, four, five on this one, on the outside. And on the interior one, there's like seven or eight pleats. <sighs> so um, I am pinning it up so that it is all under. And it's going to be a, just a really weird wavy hem is what I think. Also, this hem, from, from while it's on the dress form, like this dress is you know, this far off the ground in the back, but nowhere near that in the front. It's only like that much in the front. So it's like half as much. And I'm like wondering if that's just because like my belly takes up more room or what? Because when it's on me, it doesn't look shorter in the back than it does in the front. <laughs> so maybe it doesn't, I just don't know it. Um, anyway. I'm pinning it up and then I'm going to try it on just to make sure that it really is that way on both dresses and then if so I'm going to do a really awkward chop is the advice from the people that I trust about these sources but yeah that's a lot that's a lot so it's going to get a chop which is it's going to be a weird chop too okay I don't know how to show you me either so we're going to go to the mirror but I don't think that's going to be helpful but okay Okay, so here it is with the lights on. I kind of wish the top wasn't lined. You can see how much higher my, like the bottom maybe was way up here instead of like down here <laughs> as in my dress form. Okay, so it's fine here. And the back half looks actually longer than the front when I'm wearing it. But this appears to be pretty good. So I'm going to make the weirdest chop, I guess. Not excited about that, but okay. Okay, so I am sure that I want to make this cut. But I don't want to make this cut, I'm stressed out about it, so. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys what I got uh, yesterday. Instead of doing that for just five minutes, and then I will summon my courage to do that. Okay, so let's start with this beautiful silk situation. I got four yards of this. It is silk. I don't know what weave it is. Is it crepe? Maybe. It doesn't, it doesn't feel crepey though. Um, but it does feel like it has some texture and it also like doesn't slide. It's very like, like I feel like I could sew this is what I'm saying. So I don't know. Will there be a thirties top made out of this? Maybe. 
probably make something else out of it. I don't know, but I liked it, so I got it, and we're practicing using fabrics that aren't, you know, in our comfort zone. So this is one. This was in the cotton lawn section, which I was just like, um, this here says wall, which I would believe more than lawn, because it is not, it's see-through, but not that see-through. Like, I would make a shirt out of this, but it's pandas. Who could resist pandas, right? And it was also like, I think $7. Like, okay, Fabric Outlet in San Francisco is the place to be. 100% recommend it's in the mission. So this was like, $22 and then 50% off so it was $11 a yard this was $9.99 and then 25% off so $7.50 I think a yard which I was like sure um maybe even cheaper than that maybe it was $8.99 and 25% off then I they had some rayon and I love this but they only had one and three eighths yards, I think, or one and a half yards or something, maybe five eighths. <sighs> like, I'm pretty sure I can make a shirt out of this. I I can obviously not make the shirt that I've been making or that I'm going to make a million of. So that's probably great because <laughs> do I need another one? <laughs> um, so I have to find a pattern that will let me use less fabric for it. But like, I can wrap this around myself, <laughs> you know in a shirt formation so I figure it's 16 inches wide I can make something out of this and it's very like soft it's um uh I think it's chali from the way it feels so it's delightful and I love it and it's my color uh so I only got a yard and whatever of that um but I did get four yards of this which is like is this lace on it no it is just rayon um, and it just has this cool pattern on it, which I was like, oh, I own shirts for work that are like this kind of a, a feel, a feeling. So, and it's very like rayon yummy, like it feels good and soft and I'm like, I can't stop petting it. So I got four yards of this. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I should get a pattern that only requires like a yard and whatever, and then I can make two things out of it. Um... <laughs> That would be great. I just got four because, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a, a dress. Do I? Am I a dress person? No. Why would I make a dress? Come on now, Noelle. Anyway, uh, this is what I got. Do I have a space to store this? Absolutely not. So, fun times. But here's what happened. I'm proud of myself. I went out of my comfort zone and all of... Okay, the rayon I'm getting more comfortable with. But it's still kind of. Um, and then I don't usually wear a print that is like... A novelty print but it's pandas <laughs> and I, I also like don't normally wear white but it's pandas <laughs> so this might be a 30 shirt we'll see the butterfly blouse might might get panded it's drapey enough like we were playing with it on the thing it's drapey enough that would work so I don't know we'll see I just realized that this fabric is essentially the two colors I had to choose from <laughs> for this under dress that I'm making now so clearly I have a palette okay it's done you can see what I mean about it gets bigger and then back down and then bigger again um what I will say is it's marginally s symmetrical this side I maybe took a little bit more off than that side but like it looks like a sleep mask <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, but it is marginally, like, fairly symmetrical, which makes me actually kind of happy because I'm like, okay, it, if it was completely asymmetrical, that would freak me out. But, like, all right, cool. So I'm going to go put a tiny hem in this, like, as small as I can get it. Because I, I do want it to be as long as possible under there. Um, and this should be right along the edge. And then the front is the front is already a little shorter than the front. So I'm just going to put a little, a little hemi hem in and... Uh, move along with my life. Okay, hem is done. I'm working on making a sash. I'm essentially just taking two lengths of, should I take two or three? Oh, let's do two. So we're going to do two lengths at, you know, five inches or so, and we're going to make ourselves a little sash. Sash is done. 
Okay, I need to do hooks and knives. I did them on the overdress already. I'm going to just sneak one or two into the under underdress and then call that good. And then we're done. I am a girl who is done. But I also just put my dress in the car. I, like, put the hooks and eyes on and I'm like, I'm gonna put it in the car so it's ready to go. Could I have left it here to show you? Yeah, but I guess you guys know what hooks and eyes look like, so it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, I am gonna bring you guys with me tomorrow. I don't know how much footage I'll get. But I'll try to get some of me, like, at least in the dress so you can see what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that, so see you tomorrow. Hello, Holly. Hello. Hello, Amy. These are my buddies. This is our picnic that we're at. Astute viewers who are viewing this right now might recognize themselves. Um, I forgot my camera course so this is iPhone footage but this is what's happening at our Regency picnic. Here's me. I will go get some pictures taken in just a minute. I don't know what's up with these bags. Are you vlogging? I am vlogging. <laughs> Say hi to you. Hi. Fun times. <laughs> these are my friends. <laughs> this is Mia. Wait hang on. Mia, Amy, <laughs> Holly, Sarai, these are my OG costume friends who don't go on the internet. These are my <laughs> secret source. <laughs> Hi everybody. I'm Big Nerd. I watch the, the channel. What's your name? I'm Alex. Hi Alex. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, this is the, the picnic from the other angle. Oh, there's Lauren. She's going to get mad at me for having you on camera. We're just not going to tell her, but we're going to creep her real quick. Just creepy, creepy, creep. So I'm just editing and realized like I didn't actually end this video so that would probably be good. Um, I had a really good time at that event. It was very fun. Um, my OG friends were there so that was great. I haven't gone to a GBACG event in a long time and I keep trying to and failing. <laughs> like I think I've had tickets to two other things this year and not been able to go so I'm pretty sh excited that I got to go to one. <laughs> um, and I can't go to the Dumas events because it happens to be the same weekend as D23 and I'm going to that so woo. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, also, people told me that they were subscribed and have found out that they're no longer subscribed, so they're not getting notifications. So if you want notifications, ring the bell. Also, let me know in the comments down below. What have you been working on? What are you reading? What are you watching? I stopped reading for a little while. I've just been listening to podcasts, so um, enjoying some podcasts I'm even listening to ones that I've listened to before and that's actually like kind of good yeah and if you're new here and you have never commented before or even if you're not new here and you've never commented be before go down below and introduce yourself and let me know who you are and what you're into and what you're up to and all that kind of jazz okay I'll see you guys next time bye guys <laughs>